Welcome to our channel, everyone. I hope you guys are doing great. Um, this is me, Aman Singh. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. And with me, we have Kanwar Dilip Singh Makkar. He is also a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. And today we are going to speak about a very, very important topic for students who has been um, seeing a lot of tough time these days. And uh, some of the tough time is because of IRCC's um, processes and changes uh, due to COVID and other reasons. And some of the tough time is because of uh, decisions which uh, students make unintentionally uh, sometimes and these decisions end up uh, giving a lot of problems to them so we have a lot of questions uh, through our online consultations and on uh, on our social media and we want to address all of these questions in the uh, the video today so the questions we are going to uh, discuss is how do you select a course when you are applying for a post graduation work permit sorry when you apply for a study visa for canada and uh, can you change a course or not? And is it possible for you to do two programs of one year each? And can you take breaks between the two programs? And what is a designated learning institute? And when do you apply for a post-graduation work permit? And when does your study permit expire? And is it possible for you to do part-time studies? and how many times you can apply for a post-graduation work permit. So we're going to speak about all of these uh, in the video today. And I'm going to start with the first question. I'm going to give it to uh, to Kanwar. And uh, first of all, Amal, I, would, uh, I must say that all these questions have been well chalked out. And uh, these questions are definitely good. The answers to these questions, I would say, they are definitely going to help the potential students and even their parents. Because I think it's it's uh, all in th the, the problems, they are not only confined to students, but their parents are also equally worried that they should have a better course, better program, and they should have a better future. Ahead. So yeah, let's start with the discussion now. Sure. So let's uh, I'll give it to you and you can explain uh, how can one select a course when they are coming to Canada for studies. Uh, even though it seems to be very, very simple that uh, a student after uh, completing plus two or bachelor program or master program can easily come to Canada by making a selection of any program which is not relevant, which sometimes students feel that it, it may not be relevant to their uh, course of uh, studies which they have already done. But I must say, that it must the co program selection must show progression progression in the sense if a student has done something some program in his country then the program selection in canada must be in line with that let's assume a student who has done non medical in plus 2 now if he wants to do go for commerce it may not be in line with his uh, line of studies. So non-medical means something related to science, something related to his field of education. If a, if a student has done plus two in commerce, then definitely he can offer some accounting programs which are in line with what he has already done. True. Now let's come to bachelor. Now, what what students do? They do again. I would uh, speak out, uh, speak about the same thing. Bachelor in commerce, he cannot select technology programs. Bachelor in technology, he cannot select accounting programs. Even if you make a perfect SOP explaining why you really want to do that, no, you cannot. You cannot. Even statement of purpose would not help in this because again, I would come back. To the same thing artificial intelligence that we have already discussed a number of times so the keywords might be picked up by artificial intelligence and the artificial intelligence would find a mismatch between the previous previous program already studied and the program selection that is made now so mismatch would lead to rejection so we okay. should be very, very And careful. I cannot tell you how many students they reach out to us after having the rejections on their visas. And uh, one of the things which they have done wrong is the course selection. People okay. who are uh, who has completed their bachelor's or master's applying for an undergraduate program because that's the program they want to do. Um, 
I'm, I'm sorry to say, but it doesn't really matter what you want to do uh, when you are doing uh, dealing with immigration. The first priority is that is that going to be a course which will give you uh, a progression, which will show a progression to the immigration officer and it will bypass the artificial intelligence programs and that your file get reviewed by an immigration officer where they can see that why you're studying that program and give you an approval. So that is a very, very important point. So selection, of course, if you are not really sure how to do it yourself, reach out to immigration consultants, reach out to people who uh, do this for a living. They will definitely guide you better than uh, what you think you know. Okay. And uh, second, uh, can, can people change courses? Because a lot of times, uh, now that we have spoken about the selection of the course, this may not be the course a person really wants. So to get admission, if they select a course and when they come to Canada or where they have not even arrived there and they want to change course, what are the options? Oh, now this, this is a difficult nut to crack. Now, sometimes what students uh, see that the program selection that they have made is not the, the one that they wanted and they have already got the visa. Before visa, it is okay because the immigration officer, the visa officer would go through your file and he would find progression, he would grant you visa. But after the visa has been granted to you to come to Canada for your study purposes, now you cannot change your program. If you change your program, you will have to apply for visa once again. So your previous visa would not stand good. It would not hold good for you to come to Canada for your studies. So because that was linked to the program that you had selected before. So now the next selection means new visa. So your previous visa, visa would not be good. Now, if you come over to Canada and now you want to change your program, then it's okay because you are already inside Canada and the, the students inside Canada, they are treated differently from those who are outside Canada. So now once you are inside Canada, it becomes relatively easy for you to change your program, change your course of studies, that, that's fine. And uh, again, there are other ways also, if a pro, if a person has come here and uh, he has made, he has chosen a program of one year, let's say accounting program for one year or business administration program for one year, the next, he wants to do another program, wants to complete two years of studies in order to have three year work, post-graduation work permit, he can have any field after that. One, one year in accounting, one year in project management, or one year in business administration, that is okay. That is fine. So once you are in Canada, things are relatively easy. But once you are not in Canada, still outside of Canada, and making the program selection, you have to be very, very sure. You have to be very, very particular. No options are there after you get visa. You have to be in Canada with the same program. And I'll, I'll add a couple of things. Uh, IRCC has given uh, this provision to people who want to change the program that you can change a program and inform IRCC through the GCK account, right? And yeah. thinking about changing programs, uh, one of our student uh, clients came to my mind. Uh, he changed his program three times and uh, had a lot of vacation time and we still managed to get him a post-graduation work permit. It just came like a couple of weeks ago. So that's one story which will show people that changing programs, it's okay as long as we are able to explain it properly in the post-graduation work permit application. So if you change programs multiple times, you want to do a, a post-graduation or work permit application, it's highly important that you actually get uh, advice from a consultant. But again, as Aman said, that we have to update our information through our GC key that True. we have changed the program. If you don't do it, no, that, that, that would not hold good for you. Then your status would be, I, I don't think that that is a valid status for you. Then you haven't informed IRCC. No, you have to inform. You have to, in, in order to be legally present in Canada, doing the program of selection as no as inform to IRCC, you have to inform that, that you have made the change and you have to update it. True. So I'll leave the next questions to you, Kanwar. So what next question do you see on the board? Uh, that is uh, two year, uh, doing two one year programs. I think I- We just discussed that. Yeah. Move on. Let's move on to the next one. So now, now taking breaks between programs. Aman, uh, this is something which is which is definitely uh, a question that is asked by many. Now, yeah. to, to pro, no, now having a break while your program is on 
and what can you do in that break and how long the break could be so please throw some light on this yeah usually this question is important for two reasons one people want to know how how long they can work during the breaks and they also want to know that taking breaks would it affect their post graduation work permit applications so the answer is that yeah usually when uh, we are studying in canada you will see that uh, depending upon the type of course and the duration of the course you took people or students will be able to get uh, summer vacations and winter vacations right summer vacation is usually longer it's usually around like uh, one and a half to two months winter vacation is only like three uh, sorry three weeks right and in the in that time if you are on a valid study permit you are allowed to work full time if your college is off because of a summer or a winter vacation so you can work full time the other type of vacation you can take is you can take personal vacations in in a situation where you really have to take a vacation if you have any family emergency or something and you have to go to india and you want to get a vacation all you need to do is uh, you get it coordinated with your college get an approval letter from them and you can take a vacation that is about working now if you are taking a vacation post graduation work permits definitely get impacted if your vacation is longer than 150 days you are not considered actively pursuing studies and that's a violation of your study permit and that can get you a rejection on a post graduation work permit so you be very careful when you are taking vacations try to understand that how can you justify that your vacation is only less than 150 days so we had situations where people have taken their winter uh, vacation which is like for example uh, 120 days and then they took took two uh, more months off and that becomes more than 150 days and even in that situation if you can justify that your actual vacation is only 2 months because the other 220 days is the the break from the college and you get a letter from the college that you actually took vacation which is only 2 months there is a chance that we can still get you a post graduation work permit okay mm-hmm. and it's very important to understand this rule because a lot of students do uh, end up uh, getting a rejection on post graduation work permit because of this and i still have one question here can there be like if there are unforeseen circumstances maybe the student has to visit his home country because of some uh, parent sickness or some other reason so is that uh, do that are those things considered in this or no yes as long as you have a, it documented i always tell the students that if you are doing something like this do all the communication with your college through email so you actually have an email uh, track uh showing that when you ask them for a vacation if they approved it or not and we will use that information in your post graduation work permit and uh, it's it's uh, good to know that even ircc officers they they do consider all of this plus the the vacations people have been taking because of covid related issues and they are granting post graduation work permit for students who actually in certain situations violated this, this rule but with explanation and with evidence we were able to prove that uh, they did not violate the conditions of the study permit okay it's important yeah so that 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 is definitely some important information for the students okay now the next question that that is there on the board is what is dli first first of all the full form of dli designated learning institute and if you are coming to canada as a student and you do not know what dli is i i wholeheartedly believe there is something wrong you should know what a dli is as a student you should at least do your research which college and university you are coming to because canadian government has authorized certain colleges and universities basically most of them not uh, only a few are not most of them are designated learning institute and designated learning institutes are the uh, the colleges or universities uh, which would be Uh, providing you courses eligible for post graduation work permit so if you want to uh, eventually get your post graduation work permit uh, after studying in canada you got to make sure that you are studying at the dli is every dli worth a post graduation work permit uh, no so this is very very important again uh, if you look up the information for designated learning institutes you will see that there are multiple dli colleges which are not eligible to give you courses eligible for post graduation work permit so if your agent in whichever country you're applying from just telling you hey we got your admission in a dli 
the next question you should ask is that is my program eligible for a post graduation work permit because okay. it, it does not make sense to come to canada and spend like hundreds of thousands in certain <laughs> situations for like 30 40000 dollars to uh, to just realize that we i just wasted two years here i'm, I'm just going to have to go back because they're not going to give me a work permit you specifically use the term program which would lead to pgwp so it, that means a college or a, or, a, or a university which is DLI offering some programs. Yes. Some programs lead to PGWP and some yes. do not. Yeah, you, you, you can go. There is a link where you can search DLIs uh, through the provinces. And when you see, it will say that this college is DLI, yes or no. Is it offering programs eligible for post-graduation work permit? Yes or no. If you see yes for DLI and no for PGWP, that means that they are not going to, you are not going to be eligible to get your post graduation work permit and you should stay away from that place. So I would request after when you post this video, please put that link. Yeah, that we'll, we'll, we'll leave that link in the description section of the video. Okay. Yeah. So now the next question is when to apply for a post graduation work permit so now the oh. students are studying they have completed their studies or they're still doing their studies when to do that this is yeah this is a very um like i would say an easy question because as ircc has put that information on their websites uh, very clearly that you have 180 days from the date you complete your studies to apply for post graduation work permit if you do not do that in the 180 days then you are not eligible for post graduation work permit. And believe me, I have had cases where people don't get refusal because of this thing. Because they get completion, they just, uh, majority of these students, by the time they are completing their courses, they are, they are working somewhere, right? And they're busy working uh, so much that they forget to apply for their post graduation work permits. And by the time they apply, the 180 days passed and they are now no longer eligible for a post graduation. They now are only left with an option to uh, get an employer and get an LMIA and apply a, uh, a LMIA work permit. So, very, very important to understand this. And uh, one pointer here is that you do not have to wait for your original transcripts from the, the college or the university, as long as you have uh, some kind of a transcript that, or some even a transcript in an email or downloaded from their online. Most colleges have their online portals, right? If you download a transcript from there, you can still apply for the post graduation work permit. And once you get your original transcript, then you uh, submit it to RCC through web form because RCC is going to take around like four months to apply uh, to provide you a post graduation work permit. So you still have a lot of time. You should do the application as soon as possible. So you use the term completion of the program. Completion means last day of the program when you took yes, the last the last day of the program. And then uh, you, usually what happens is that multiple colleges or universities would send uh, uh, a completion uh, a letter or a completion email to uh, to all of their students that yes, to, uh, on this date you have completed your program. So basically the two things you are going to need is your completion certificate and your transcripts. And the rest is your personal documentation to apply for a post-graduation work permit. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, so now, uh, when do you think study permit expires? Oh, this, this is interesting because we see a lot of problems happening because of this thing. A study permit is a piece of paper given to you when you come to Canada on the border and it has an expiry date. So this is the date till which you are allowed to study in Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there is a trick. The expiry date on the study permit is not the only date when a study permit can expire. So study permit expires on the date which is printed on the study permit or 90 days past the completion date of your program, whichever comes first. Whichever comes first or later. Exactly. So for example, if today is September 5, if your study permit is valid till January 2023, say January 2023, okay? But if your course is completed today, so your study permit is not going to expire in January. It's going to expire in October, November, December. So December 5, 2022, your study permit will expire. Okay. So, so after that date, you do not have any valid permit in Canada. So you got to try to make sure that if you want to extend your status, 
So if for some reason, if you want to study further or if you if you want to change your status, if you want to live in Canada with a valid status, you do your applications for status related activities in the 90 days after completing your program. Okay, yeah, that is very, 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 <laughs> very, very important. Yeah, very important information. Okay, so now part time studies are do are they eligible for PGWP? Oh, this is another one. A lot of uh, problems happening with uh, certain students, and uh, because of COVID, that is also uh, when a lot of uh, courses has gone online or uh, part time. And you can see that there are multiple public policies related to this. But in a general situation, when there is no COVID related issue or no health related issue. The only time a part-time study is allowed is when that part-time study is happening in the final semester of your whole course whole or whole program, right? If your part-time study is in the middle of the, the program, uh, then you may not be eligible for a post-graduation work permit. And it's very clearly written in the uh, description of the requirements of the post-graduation work permit. But certain situations uh, because of COVID arrived uh, and IRCC said that if your uh, program is uh, you're studying in the, uh, the winter, spring or summer 2020 semesters and you studied part time, then you would be eligible for a post-graduation work permit. But most likely all of the students who completed these programs in 2020, winter, spring or summer, they probably have already applied or received their post-graduation work permit. So everybody else who is studying now you got to make sure that you complete your studies full time, either online or remote for the regular semesters. And in the final semester, you have the eligibility to uh, complete your courses part time and then still be eligible for a post graduation work permit. OK, yeah. Right. Yeah. OK, so now uh, the the most interesting program question that we have on our list how many times can I apply for PG, PGWP after completing my study? Oh, this, is, this, is, this is again an interesting one. I guess like all of the questions on our list were very, very interesting today. So when we are studying in Canada, right, it's made very clear by RCC again that you can only apply for a post-graduation work permit once. Okay, so if you study for a one year program or a two year program or a three year program or a four year program, once that program finishes, you can apply for a post graduation work permit once. You cannot study one year, apply for a post graduation, and then opt to study again and then apply for another. They are not going to give you the second post graduation work permit. So if you are coming to Canada and you want to plan for your permanent residency, which I believe is the intention of most of the people coming to Canada as students, that they want to uh, study first and get their work permits and eventually become permanent resident. So plan accordingly. Understand that if I just study for a one year program, would I be able to get permanent residency in the next one year? How am I going to be eligible? Which program, which province I need to, to select for all of this? If uh, by the the highest of chances, I'm, I'm, I'm going to a certain province and I'm doing certain job after a year, what will be my situation? Am I going to be eligible for a PR? If you feel like that's not going to happen for you, uh, select another one year program right uh, before you finish the first program. So do two one year programs and then apply for a post graduation work permit, which will be for three years. So, right? so you're trying to say post graduation refers to first graduation that you come across. Exactly. So just the, it's the the first graduation you do, regardless of which program, you cannot apply for it twice. So the the whole the the I guess the 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 whole point of the whole video comes down to planning properly, and have this information handy before you start studying, not after you have done everything and then the the damage is irreversible. Yeah. So the first application that you make after you graduate, first application after you are done with your studies, you get the post graduation work permit. That's it. After exactly. The, after that, you can study as much as you want. There, you're not going to be eligible for a second post graduation work permit. The only, I wouldn't say exemptions. The only things which could have uh, hel helped people get uh, longer post graduation work permits was the uh, COVID exemptions. And I believe uh, after this year, even they are not going to come again. So a lot of people who have whose work permit has expired, government has given them the option of extending those work permits by eighteen months. 
but uh, i believe the last date of uh, those programs is uh, december 2022 so after that uh, nobody is going to be eligible to apply for those extensions anymore okay yeah okay thank you aman so i think we had a very good discussion which will be very very helpful for the potential students and the students who are already in canada true true yeah and, and i i loved it i loved it and i i feel that this is the information which needs to go out to students because many of them as i said unintentionally make the wrong decisions and end up in troubles and uh, it hurts when people have spent even not just the students their parents have spent so much of money uh, for for sending their kids to canada and at the end of the day they had to to go back for a simple tiny mistake which they were not even aware of that they are making right so i believe uh, i don't know if, if this is something canada can do but they all of this information need to be given to students along with their study permits right hey here is your study permit here are the important dates don't <laughs> mess these up otherwise we'll not give you study post graduation work permits but right? again i i do believe that there are if you, if you talk about students coming from different countries the agents that they apply through maybe they, they are a bit careless or the students become a bit careless com complacent and they don't focus on the requirements when they land in canada True. and sometimes maybe the, the company that they are in so maybe maybe the the milestone of arriving in canada seems so big for many people that the while achieving that milestone they just forget about anything everything they, they get they get overwhelmed by that overwhelmed with the yeah. because again like i came to canada as a student the first day i came here i didn't really know many people here so Uh, the uh, the dates on how many how many programs I have to do how long do I have to do it? I, there was nothing was that on my mind I was like okay who's gonna pick me up and take me to a place where I can sleep tonight <laughs> right <laughs> things like that yeah I, but eventually it uh, in even in the first semester I guess like if somebody can get this information and make all the right decisions things will become easier for them in the long run uh, of. Uh, Uh, towards their aim of achieving permanent residency in Canada. Okay, yeah. So yeah. thank you, everyone. I think we should close our discussion here yeah, because definitely. we have on our plate, but we want to carry it forward to, uh, for for our next video. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll yeah. come up with some uh, good discussions in the uh, forthcoming videos and uh, perfect. Thank you, everyone, and uh, and thank you, yeah, thank you, everyone who is watching, and thank you, everyone who is going to watch later on. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of your time, and I hope the information we are providing is going to help you or and somebody you love or wants this information to be heard. And uh, if you like the content in the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and uh, share it with your friends. And uh, we love to have everybody uh, keeping safe, please, so that uh, we can provide you, keep providing you all of this information through our videos. Thank you very much, and uh, stay safe, please. Thank you. Thank you.